There's nothing he ain't seen before. For all your sin, all your sorrow, and your burdens, there's a Savior and he calls. Bring it all to the table. last few nights uh, we've had together I always enjoyed coming down here to King James Baptist Church and uh, what the Lord did last night I did I was telling the preacher that service last night carried over uh, to McDonald's up the road up here 
Uh, we stopped up there last night and they all got to singing inside the restaurant and wound up with all the employees. One guy was running around there with his hands up like that. And they were singing along with us. We were singing Victory in Jesus. And it started getting good in there. Uh, they started giving us ice cream and everything else. Uh, uh, it was first, the kids wanted ice cream. I said, well, we'll, you know, we'll get everybody ice cream. They said they didn't have none. And little by little, the machine, I guess, it started making it again. And this old boy, he just kept setting it out there. And he said, how many of these you want? I said, I don't know, about you know, 40 or 50 probably. And, uh, but he'd already made a bunch. So I said, about 15 more. And we gave him out. And uh, I said, uh, how much are these? He said, I don't know. Whatever you want to give us. And so we gave him some money uh, for him, and we just had the best time ever was. And the kids from Rockingham got fired up, and our young people got fired up. So the Lord used your church last night to stir up some people for tomorrow at their churches. And that's the good thing about revival. It don't just help us. It helps all these visiting. Now, the preacher from over here at... Uh, uh, Lancaster talked to him and they was just all fired up. And he was coming back tonight and they got tired of working, had a work day all day and didn't have time to get through. But they, they was eating it up last night. He had a young lady with him and uh, the little skinny boy Robbie that stood over here and gave a testimony. Uh, the Lord used that little boy to get all that girl's heart. And I've always said that there's nothing humanly speaking, humanly speaking, that'll get a young person's attention in church like another young person up doing something like that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it got her attention. So praise God. Lord, use this meeting, preacher. And uh, it's sure good to see these kids. He called them kids. They ain't kids no more. I remember when they was little, and I, I remember a little, little Seth, I don't know what happened to his little miniature guitar, but y'all remember when he used to stand up here and play that, that little bitty guitar? It wasn't that long. And he'd just stand up here and he'd just play the fool out of that thing. I'll never forget him doing that. And uh, of course, they're very blessed and talented. And, and Brother Hensley is a blessed man uh, with his, with his uh, girls here and their families. That's a blessing. You know, if, you got your, if, you got your, if you're saved and, and you're healthy and you got your family, you're a rich person. You're a very rich person. Yeah, this world, uh, these people in Hollywood give anything in the world to have what we have here tonight. Just to be able to think, think and, and eat. Amen. It's been able to eat. And uh, I tell you, I've always loved him. I've always respected him. And I've listened to him teach and preach the Bible for nearly 40 years. Uh, but my, what he's been through in the last couple of years, you don't get out learning books. You don't take that in school. And my level of respect has went up another notch for Dr. Hensley, and I mean that, I mean that, and I say that, I don't say that because he's sitting there. Uh, what he's been through in the last few years, and I never remember Miss Hensley, always right there in her spot, in that chair seat right there, and uh, then how he's been, the physical problem, but appreciate you, preacher, it's an inspiration to me. It's an inspiration to me and others coming along. I, I always, when I go through a hard time, I think about men of God that's blazed the trail a little bit ahead of me, and it helps me. Every time I was going through, I, I used to look at Ed Maccabee, and he'd tell about the troubles he'd been through, and Dr. Ruckman and all them guys. And, and when I was going through trouble, I thought, well, if them guys can make it, I can make it. I thought when I when my when I run, you know, I'd run, I run the cold, I run the snow, I run the, and my motto was always, if Rocky can do it, I can do it. <laughs> That's always my motto, and my and, and in preaching I'm the same way. Bless God, if they can do it, I can do it. And so praise the Lord uh, for being here this evening. I have enjoyed it, and uh, can't wait to see you folks again down the road. If uh, so we're going to be in heaven Monday evening, so I'll see you there. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Uh, the, the, the two solar eclipses are going to cross in Rapture, Indiana. I don't know what time it'll be, uh, but we'll be in glory. What about that? Amen. We done figured that out. And, uh, but, uh, you know, it would be nice. What if it really did happen? You don't know. Who knows? Uh, nobody knows, but the Lord could come tomorrow. Uh, like he said, buddy, that'd make a difference in our life. All right, let's take our Bible and turn to Psalm 100 tonight. Uh, we'll, we'll look at a scripture here this evening. I, I, I preached this a lot of different ways, and several, about a year ago, a church over here in Salisbury, and, and in a different way, but it's been on my heart all, all day. Couldn't get this off my heart. So I'm going to read this scripture and bring you a little thought here tonight. Psalm 100, this very well known scripture, everybody knows this. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. 
Serve the Lord with what? Gladness, not madness, not sadness. David didn't say, I was mad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. I was sad when they said unto me, let's, I was glad when they said unto me. And uh, come, before the, uh, come before his presence with singing. That's exactly what we've done here tonight. Look at this. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. Somebody said, well, he's a self-made man. No, he ain't. If he is, he made a mess. Yeah, yeah. It, he made us. We didn't make him. Yeah. We didn't create God. He created us. Yeah. And we are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. That's what we've done tonight. And into his courts with praise. That's what we've done tonight. Be thankful in him. That's what we are tonight. And bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth unto all generation. I want to preach tonight on the subject being thankful for what we don't have. Nine times out of ten when it's Thanksgiving that time of year, all us preachers we preach messages and I do and other time of year about how we should be thankful for this and we should be thankful for that and we ought to be thankful and, and we should and, I'm, and we should be and ought to be and shame on us if we're not. Uh, tonight I want to talk about being thankful for what we do not have. There's some things that you don't have tonight you ought to jump up and down and shout about uh, that you don't have. And I want to think about a few of these this evening. And uh, I want to say, first of all tonight, I'm thankful that I don't have a mummy for my Savior. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad. You know, it's just Easter, it was Resurrection Day we celebrated last week, uh, uh, last Sunday morning, and everybody talks about the resurrection of Christ and did it really happen and is he really still alive? And, uh, and the truth is, yes, it sure is. Amen? Yeah, that's right. I'm glad my Savior is not in a tomb somewhere as a mummy. I'm glad and thankful tonight uh, that you can't find one of his bones anywhere in any place. You know, that sets Christianity apart from all other religions of the world. You know that, right? You can, if you went somewhere over there tonight, somewhere and found the remains of, of Muhammad, uh, you, if you could, and there's somewhere over there, you could dig it up and maybe you could find some dust or some kind of particles or bones and dig it up and you could put Muhammad's bones right there and every Muslim in the world could still practice their religion and be the same as they always was. Yeah. It wouldn't change anything at all. If you went to the tomb of Buddha and you dug out Buddha's ashes and, and just put dust right there on that, on that pulpit tonight and uh, there, every Buddhist in the world could be a good Good Buddhist wouldn't change your religion one bit. Still be a dedicated Buddhist. There's a bone. I'm telling you tonight, if you found one bone of Jesus Christ anywhere in this world, we're out of business. We have nothing to preach. We have nothing to meet for. We have no reason to sing. We got no reason to tell witness. We're out, we're out of business. We have no right to exist as a church if you could find his bone. But thank God tonight, the tomb is empty. I'm glad my Savior ain't a mummy. I'm glad the Lord have mercy uh, that he ain't over yonder in some rotten or in some tomb somewhere. Like old Buddha, if you can find Buddha, you just squirt a little pledge right there and take a rag and wipe Buddha off of the pulpit. He ain't nothing but dust. And Muhammad too. Get rid of him. Get him out of here. He's a flop. He's a failure. You say, well, you shouldn't criticize other people's religion. They shouldn't fake it and try to substitute somebody else for what the real Savior is, Jesus Christ. I'm glad my Savior tonight is not a mummy. You'll never find his bone. You know, a few years ago they come out some guy some guy come out with something and uh, it's been about probably 10 years ago and uh, they they uh, somebody said they found a tomb and they found the bones of Jesus and uh, they found a tomb of yonder in a holy land somewhere and it had his name uh, Yeshua they call you know stuff and, yep there it is right there and they honestly thought that Christians was going to give up I guess they thought we were crazy uh, and, and they underestimated us really and 
they thought, uh, oh, they'll shut the churches down. We found them. Listen, you ain't found no bones of Jesus. I'm, I'm telling you, you ain't found his bones. You ain't found his fingernail. You're not found his big... Uh, you're not, not found his earlobe. Uh, you're not found not one thing. I'm telling you, brother. I, I, I'm just Stevie Wonder to find Ben Laden before you find the bones uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. You'll never ever find uh, the Lord Jesus Christ's bones. Amen. That's right, brother. Uh, a lady doo doo uh, will speak in tongues and lead a lady Sunday school class uh, before you'll find any of the bones of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ain't gonna happen. Uh, There's nowhere in this world. Hallelujah, brother. Jelly Roll uh, will be kind of anorexic, and uh, Donald Trump and Hillary will have an affair, and uh, Dr. Fauci will go to a Republican convention and lick doorknobs, and, and, uh, and, and, and Kanye will be nice to a white girl before you'll find the bones of Jesus. I'm glad tonight you'll not find these bones. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose. Hallelujah. He arose. Amen. That's exactly right, brother. Uh, Joe Biden will pass an IQ. I better shut up, brother. I'm, I, I, that's disrespectful. Uh, but I'm telling you, you'll not find him. <laughs> you people are awful. Uh, I'm telling you, I, I'm glad they won't find his bones, preacher. I'm glad he's alive. Ever liveth to make intercession for us and has the keys of death and hell and one day will return in power and glory. Hallelujah. I'm glad I don't have a mummy for a savior. Number two, let me say this, I'm thankful tonight. I'm thankful that I don't have a monkey for a mother. I like that for alliteration, Al. I, I, I know that ain't real educated sounding, but I'm glad my mama wasn't a monkey. Amen. I'm glad, brother, I, God, made, God made us. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. Uh, he was the mother of all living. Glory to God, brother. I'm glad my mama wasn't a, wasn't a monkey. And that's one of my pet peeves is to preach on evolution and blast it because evolution is the, the most ridiculous, the silliest, most wicked religion religion on planet earth to deceive our young people coming up. They get our kids in school and don't be intimidated by it. Don't be intimidated by it. Huh? They put a little bitty monkey over here and then a little bit bigger monkey here and then a little bit bigger monkey here and then a little bit bigger monkey here and finally he turns into, he gets a little straighter in every, every picture and he stands up and as he's Neanderthal man, Heidelberg man, Piltdown man and all that and, and you know if you're not, if you don't know the truth uh, you'll say oh my goodness, oh my goodness there's Smart. They figured out the ages of those rocks. They dated them for that. That's the biggest bunch of bull I ever heard of in my life. They don't a bit more know how old them rocks are uh, than I know how it is, how far it is from here to uh, Taiwan. They, they have no idea what they're making guesses, people, and uh, get us to believe it. Listen, there's a God. Uh, there's a God. If you had ever, if you had every college professor in America here tonight and if you have them from uh, Columbia from University of uh, Columbia down there and every high school professor in America sitting in here tonight, every one of them there's only four explanations for all this being here. The world, the planets the universe, air, rebreathe sight, atmosphere planets, sun, moon, stars there's only four explanations for it being here. Now if they were here tonight and I said this, they'd accuse me of being oversimplification. Over you know, they'd, they'd say, well, yeah, you're misrepresenting. No, I'm not. Everyone, when it comes right down to it, uh, my, my job as a preacher is to break it down into its lowest common denominator so you can understand it and not mix it up with a bunch of big words to try to impress you with my education. And they say, every one of them believes one of these four things. Number one, they believe that it came supernaturally out of nowhere by itself. Number two, it came supernaturally out of nowhere by a divine act of creation. Number three, it always has been here. That's the eternity of matter. It never had a beginning. It always exists. And number four, it ain't even really here. You just think it is. 
You got to smoke a little dope to believe that one. And uh, that's uh, uh, the hippies believe and, but they, and they did. That's a, lot of, a lot of them people there, they, they, they ain't real, man. It's just we're, we're, we're living in a simulation. That's what they believe in Hollywood now. It's, it's all a simulation. You know, where nothing's real. Nothing is real. You know, stupid beetles. Uh, so, uh, strawberry fell. Well, that's called, uh, there's hallucinating, brother. Listen, uh, it is real. Yeah. It is real. You get your, you get your hand cut real bad. Somebody slap you in the face. It's real. It's real. So that one's out. Yeah. It came supernaturally out of nowhere by itself. That's out. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Something can't come from nothing, people. Yeah. Yeah. Something can't come. Now look, if there's no God, if there's no God, I mean, they really ain't but two explanations. It either got here by itself or somebody made it. Yeah, yeah, right. Now, I know that's putting it awful simple, but that's the truth. Either somebody put this here or it got here by itself. Which one's scientific? The second one. Somebody made it. Yeah, you see this right here? You see this table right here? I, I'm going to tell you tonight. I, you say, Brother Danny, can you absolutely prove somebody made that table? Well, no, I can't. I mean, I, I didn't see it. I didn't see that happen. But I guarantee you somebody made this. Yeah. You know how I know? It's got design. That's not random. That's not an accident. Nobody, you wouldn't just start walking in the woods and found that. See, it's got design. Now see, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That you can see that corner here. It's measured. It's uh, somebody done some fancy little work there. And uh, and you go, oh, you didn't see it. You, I know you're right. But I can prove in court somebody made that a whole lot easier than you can prove somebody didn't. That's right. That's right. See, P. always saying you can't prove there's a God. Well, you nuts. You sure can't prove they ain't one. Yeah, right. There's a lot more proof there is a God than there ain't. There's proof there ain't no God. You say, well, prove there is a God. Prove there ain't one. <laughs> you can't. You can't. Now, look. You see that thing right there? Uh, if you went out there on the beach to die, down there in South Carolina, on the coast out there, and you, you looked out there, and uh, you saw these seashells, and you were just walking down through there, and, and these seashells spelled out your name, and your address, and your zip code and telephone number, uh, would you just say that just, it just so happened that all those little creatures that died right there and that randomly happened by itself? Well, of course not. And ain't no scientists in the world believe that neither. No scientists will believe that, that, that right there happened. Just they found that out in the woods. Everyone's, oh, well, that's ridiculous. You can look at it and see something. Well, look at that. That ain't nothing but a piece of wood. Look at the universe. Look at the solar system. Look at the stars, the planet. Look, that's how we tell time, y'all. It, it's, it's a clock. The solar system is a clock. We set our clocks back. You mean to tell me, you, 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 if you had a watch, nobody wears a watch no more, uh, but uh, uh, you, a watch as a watchmaker. You can't say, well, that was just a pile of screws that fell off the, off the couch and landed them there, and they all randomly started working. So you know somebody had to make that watch. You can't have a watch without a watchmaker. You can't have a, a creation without a creator. I just proved there's a God. You can't have creation without a creator. You can't have something without something making it. Something can't come out of nothing. They wouldn't know nothing for it to come from. There wasn't nothing there. It can't happen. It's, un, un, it's unscientific. It cannot be. It will not be. Ladies and gentlemen, if you put your hand on a, if you put your hand on a, uh, if you went out in your car and it had ice on your, on your windshield, you know, we've had, we have frost here, I think, yesterday morning, morning before it, it actually snowed the mountain uh, day before yesterday, and I thought it was getting summertime. Uh, but it's up above us about 20 miles, and you saw a handprint on that windshield, on that ice, you'd say, somebody has touched my windshield. Yeah. Well, you don't know that. You can't prove it. No, I can't. Right there, that's circumstantial evidence. See, if I was in court and I was a lawyer, and actually I used to want to be a lawyer. I'd like to be a lawyer and try a case in court, but uh, you don't have to go to school to be a preacher, so I decided to do that. Uh, I ain't sitting in school for no eight years, uh, but I'm, I'm just kidding with you, really. But I've always wanted to do a court case and try, you know, see if I can prove my point. <laughs> and I, I, I was like, Your Honor, I, I'm Reverend Castle. You are here to, uh, you're to present. There is a God, right? That's right, sir. There is a God. What's your buddy over here say? Well, there is no God. 
He said, let's hear your, your case, sir. And uh, uh, the lawyer over here says, uh, there is no proof. There's a lot of suffering in the world. If there was a God, he would stop it. There's no proof. Nobody's ever seen him. We pray and nothing will happen. And therefore, there is no God. That's their argument. What are you, what is, what's your argument, uh, Reverend Castle? Your Honor, the fact that we are here proves somebody put us here. The fact that my eyes can see that wall and that guitar and that green lamp. How do I know how to do colors? Doesn't that evolve? Your eyes evolve? Uh, and listen, they can't make a camera that can do what our eyes can do. And it's random, it's accident, it's by chance. What, where'd the material come from? Where did DNA come from? I, I said, look, look, I know this is very simple and little kids talk about it, but it's true, professors. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah. You can't have a chicken without an egg. Amen. And you can't have an egg without a chicken. Now, you know what they do? They laugh at me. Oh, you silly hillbilly talking about chicken and egg. Well, answer me, big shot. Where'd it come from? Yeah, how'd a chicken get here? Yeah, there had, you know which came first? The chicken. God didn't create an egg. You know, there wasn't nobody set on it. <laughs> so he made grown chickens and they fell in love, got married, had, little, had eggs and, and little baby chicks come out. And, and, and that's, uh, that's simple. That's so simple. That's my argument. And he's over here rolling his eyes. I said, oh gosh. Oh gosh, can, can you give me a lecture? Have you studied evolution in college, Reverend Castle? Uh, uh, no, I haven't. Have you studied the doctrine of pre-tribulation, uh, tribula uh, mid-tribulation, and post-tribulation raptures, and the millennium of the church, and what play the two-part witnesses in Revelation chapter 11 mean, sir? Uh, no, I haven't. Well, then shut up. If, you, if I have to study your junk, you should be able to have to study our stuff. That's right. They ain't got no right making an intelligent comment on the Bible when they ain't even never studied it for about 20 years and saying it ain't right. They don't know. They talk about us for not knowing. They're the ones who don't know, brother. This book said in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Jesus Christ was a creationist. He said God made them male and female. There goes the transgenders uh, right out the window. Tra my Sunday wasn't transgender visibility day, people. It was resurrection day. But the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ got up. Hallelujah, brother. I'm telling you tonight, I'm glad I don't have a monkey for my mama. Amen. Glory to God, brother. I get on that all day. I, I'm telling you, listen, I, I've noticed uh, serve, serve an atheist a good meal and then tell him there wasn't no cook. Well, it just popped up. Uh, you know, I mean, all by itself, you know. Uh, everything, Lord have mercy. Are you kidding me? You know how come an atheist can't find God? Same reason thief can't find policemen. He ain't looking for him. He's going to live like a devil. And most people who are atheists have a moral reason uh, for being an atheist. In other words, they want to party and shack up and don't want to have to answer to nobody. That's, that's, that's the deal right there. Deep down inside, they resent somebody up there telling them what they can do and what they can't do. So they just convince themselves there ain't no God. And then they get woke. And you know what woke is? Born again of the devil. Just like we get born again of the Holy Ghost, they get uh, born of the unholy ghost, brother, and full of demons where they can't even think straight no more and become reprobate. I'm glad, I'm thankful tonight I don't have a, mo uh, a monkey for my mother. Amen. Let me say thirdly tonight, I'm thankful tonight I don't have a myth for a Bible. Yeah. Glory to God. I'm glad we don't have just some religious book I say here and stick our nose in it and act like I'm glad we can count on what this book says. I'm thankful tonight for our forefathers. I'm thankful for men way back like William Tyndale I found that first translation into English and then burned at the stake and then I'm thankful that God used him. A man said one day, he said King James changed a lot of that stuff in the Bible because it didn't go along with one. Uh, listen people uh, and, listen, and I know y'all know this he's, a, he's a way smarter on this stuff than I am King James never touched that Bible he was simply the ruling monarch in charge of giving the order and had like what, 54 
scholar or something like that. Uh, 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 in order to translate it, they met together and compared notes. They'd separate and they'd get back together and compare notes. And God had his hand on them and put that thing together. And there's no doubt in my mind, God had his hand on those men as they put together the King James Bible. And there's never been a mistake proved in it one time. It's the book that'll get the job done. It's the book that mamas have carried in the hospital. And there when it, it's the book that they had at Miss Hensley's funeral. It's the book that he, the preacher raised you girls with all your life. It's the book that we got down and prayed when we didn't know how, to, how we was going to get our bills paid and what we was going to do and how we was going to make it. It's that old book right there, brother. I'm glad it's not a myth. It's seen the birth of all the other books. It'll see the grave of all the rest of them. It's well, listen, 1 John 5, 7 is supposed to be in it. There is a trinity. There is God, Father, God, Son, God, the Holy Ghost. I'm, Daniel 3, 25 is supposed to be in it. Acts 8, 37 is supposed to be right there where it is. And I'm glad, brother, I don't have a myth for a Bible. Amen. Now it's a shame that people, we got such a great book like that and the average person in the pew don't know it no better than they do. What about them two old drunks the other day? They was on out there and they were about to get in trouble and about to get arrested. And one of them looked at him and said, we in trouble, man. And he said, well, what are we going to do, Harry? He said, I'm going to pray. And he said, you don't know how to pray. He said, I do too. He said, I can pray the Lord's Prayer. He said, you can't pray the Lord. You don't know the Lord's Prayer from nothing. He said, I'll give you $10 if you can pray the Lord's Prayer. And he said, all right, here I go. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And he went to the Lord and he said, I'm dead gone. He can give him $10. <laughs> You know, that's, that's about the average person's knowledge of the Bible. I'm, that's a shame. I'm glad, brother. Uh, they say there's 65 million books in, the, in the, uh, the Library of Congress up there has 530 miles of shelves of books. And only one of them is an inspired, infallible, inerrant, living word of the living God. Hey, if the Bible ain't true, why is everything turning out just like it said it would? And that's, and that's sort of, is that coincidence? I remember, I said the other night, I remember when I first started preaching, and I preached, we preached them two witnesses laying in the street for three days, and everybody in the world see them. I remember preaching that, and I remember thinking, I don't know how in the world, people in Africa is going to see them, people in China is going to see them. That's what it says. And we preached that and preached that. Now, you know, there's six and a half billion smartphones in the world now. And there's only 8 billion people. Well, you take off babies, and that's about enough for everybody. There are people that don't have them, but the big majority, I mean, there, you, you know as well as I do, people, it's very easy now for three people to lay in the street of Jerusalem and everybody in the world see them. All you do, look at it. See the prophecy? How's that? How'd they know that 2,000 years ago when John the Apostle wrote that? Yeah. How, how did they know? How did they know that there would be a man how could one man run the whole world? Well, they thought that's crazy. It's ridiculous. One man can't get in charge of the whole world, and he sure can't get every track everybody down and put a mark on them and make it to where you can't buy nothing or sell it. If you ain't, we don't laugh at it now, do we? They're putting chips in people's head and hands right now by the thousands. And I told you the other night about the Elon Musk uh, thing with the, the computer chip. They just done this a few months ago, first time in history, implanted in the person's head here. And it's supposed to be able to uh, help with healing, uh, be able to help uh, people that are crippled, be able to walk, uh, people, people that have in, infirmities, be able to heal them. And then they're saying what we're doing is we're going to get to the place where it's merged with with the, with the internet, basically. So basically, you'd have a smartphone in your head. And well, you think things are bad now, you ain't looking like that. Uh, you think people's ro minds are full of the devil now. Good night in the morning. They say you'll be able to control your cell phone uh, by thinking, by thinking. Uh, put it here, but it's already done. Look it up. It's, I mean, it's out there. I'm glad I don't have a myth for a Bible. It's all coming to pass, just like God said that it would. I tell you what, I wouldn't take my chances against the a book like that that prophesied that 2,000 years ago and nailed it. How many have been to places lately where they say uh, we don't take cash? Everywhere you go. Oh, that makes a fire out of me. I still use money. 
and they look at me like I'm old timey or something. I still get a check for my paycheck from our church and I go to the bank every Monday morning and I cash it. I put my tithes in my wallet where I've always, I've always done. My tithes and offering goes down in my wallet and I put the rest in there and I pay my bills. I want to touch it before it goes on to the bill collector. <laughs> and, but everything, it's all electronics, all electronics, all electronics. And you know, really, it's all electronics. That ain't, that ain't really money. Uh, we, we bought uh, two houses next to our church not long ago and went down there to uh, the bank and I said, we're going to have to have some money. Uh, to get and they said, we ain't got it. Bank didn't even have it. If everybody in this church went to the bank Monday and said, we want out our savings or whatever, I got, they'd probably say, you're going to have to wait a week or two before we can get it. It's all just little numbers on, on computers. And little, all it's going to take is a big emergency. One big more emergency. That's my opinion. I don't know. I'm not a prophet. I'm just an old simple country preacher. Uh, but that, this Wuhan flu that hit us uh, four years ago, uh, we're lab rats, people. You know that, right? We're there to run experiments on us to see how far they can go with us. And boy, I, was I ever disappointed in a lot of people. I, Lord have mercy. And I know, I was like you, I was scared to death. We thought everybody was going to die. You remember when we first that? We, everybody's going to die. Preacher, you're going to kill everybody if you go to church and all that. But it didn't take long. It, in my gut, in my gut, I said, something stinks in this thing, man. It, this ain't just some kind of sickness. This is a, this is a test uh, running us somewhere. And they're, they're, they're getting us to the place. And everybody says, no, Nothing's coming, nothing's coming. I don't think so. I think the next thing, it's my opinion, is going to be some kind of cyber attack or some kind of shutdown of the grid system uh, or electricity. You remember like when everybody's phone quit working here a few weeks ago and people start panicking? What if all of a sudden, like Monday, <laughs> what if all of a sudden, it's starting to get spooky in here now. <laughs> what if all of a sudden, your cell phone quit working? You talk about flipping people's lid. You couldn't do nothing. You couldn't work. You couldn't you, you, you pay your bills. You could, they, they got us, y'all. We're connected to that thing now to where we can't, we can't do nothing without it. And all it's going to take is a big emergency, like Monday. And if, if that was to happen, Lord have mercy, don't let it get out. Castles down there, set the day and the hour. I'm not, I'm just joking. Uh, but uh, if, if and when that, that would happen like that, bam, and the whole world goes into chaos, and about that time, some super duper human charismatic leader like the world's ever seen steps out and says, I have come to make peace. And he turns everything back on. And he said, now, if you get coronavirus, if you get cancer, if you get, all you have to do is come to one of our citywide meetings, bam, touch them to get better. Signs and wonders. And then he says, somebody's gonna say, what happened to that bunch of people? The millions of people. Well, they were in our way. They wouldn't cooperate with our one world system. That's what they look at us like. You people are just sticks in the mud. You won't cooperate. You won't, you won't go along with what we want to do. And they're exactly right. We won't. Guilty. Amen. Guilty. I, I, you know what they hate? You know what the government hates? They, think, they hate anybody that can think for themselves. That's good. You can have your own opinion. You can have your, they can't stand it. They want us all to be sheeple and just fall right in line and do whatever they say and bow down. Yes, sir. Put it right there. And you can't. You go to the grocery store. You don't use money. You use a chip that's in your hand. You go to the bank. You go to buy gas. You're shut down without it. And Revelation 13 said that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark in his right. I'm telling you, buddy, I'm glad I don't have a myth for a Bible. But it's a coming right on through, y'all. It's a coming right on through. Just like God said that it would thousands of years ago. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I'm on board. I'm glad I'm with the program. I ain't much, but I'm one of his. I'm not much of a, of a, of a Christian, but bless the Lord, I'm in the family. And I'm thankful tonight. I don't have a myth for a Bible. Quickly, number four, I'll hurry. I'm thankful that I don't have a morgue for a church. 
Amen. All right, listen, this ain't a morgue in here tonight. This is the church of the living God. I'm glad for what the preacher said a while ago. All right, we come, listen, brother. We, I'm glad there's a little life in here. You know, most people in the world have never in their life seen nothing like what we had in here last night. I mean, most churches I'm talking about, there was more amen set in here last night than there was in some churches in the last 50 years put together. I'm telling you, it's a sad day uh, when people go to the ball game, scream like Comanche India, and come to church and sit like a wooden Indian. Ain't that right? I like it about to die. And I'm not again, listen, my, my grandson, you know, Dax, he races motorcycle and he races professionally and all that. And listen, if he wins one of them big races, you better believe I'll go, woo! Ain't nothing wrong with that at all. Now, you're kind of, hits a touchdown, hits a home run, jump up and down, I don't care. But what in the world is wrong with us coming to the house of God? This ain't no ball game, y'all. This is reality. We're not going to burn in hell, people. We're not going to burn in hell. Our name's in the book and the devil can't get it out. I'm glad tonight. Thank God I don't have a morgue. I got a church. Hear about that one church? There's a woman died. Died right there in the service. And they, and they they called the first responders, the EMS. They, they carried four women out before they got the right one. Yeah. It's an average church member. That's the way they look sitting in there like a dead. Amen. I'm glad I don't have a morgue for a church. That's right, brother. I love that story. I tell it everywhere I go. This old woman, uh, she old shouting granny. You know, them old shouting grannies about died out. There's a couple of ladies in our church preachers uh, uh, told me one day, they said, uh, Brother Danny, how come uh, we don't, uh, women don't shout no more in church? And I said, they're all dead. They're all dead. All them old women died. Now it's your turn. Why ain't you shouting? Yeah. Oh, you're 30, you're 40, you're 50. You ought to be the only shouting now. That's, right. that's how old they was when you was young watching them shout. Yeah, right. Amen. Yeah. Now grandma's the backslid. She lay on the t watch TV all morning watching them wicked dogs on the view and, 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 and full of the devil and she ain't got no shout in her soul no more. Oh, I'm telling you tonight, brother, uh, I, I, we, this ain't a morgue and I know it ain't all about the racket. I mean, I... It, Listen, God can move in when it's completely quiet, and I love it when he does. You don't have to have a noise, but they sure ain't nothing wrong. You don't have to shout. You don't have to shout and be right with God, but if you're right with God, you don't mind it. Somebody else does. Amen. 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 Everybody don't have to run around. I'm a, I know I'm extrovert. I understand that. I, I, I got it. I, 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 I don't see how anybody stands and sit there. And, that's why I'm a preacher. I, I, it's more, a lot more fun to jump up here and run around uh, than it is I have to sit there and listen to the whole service. So I, I'm enjoying uh, church. It's not a morgue, brother. It, it's, it, it is the church of the living God. Amen. You say, well, this lady that lives up the street by church one time we went to and uh, we was talking to her and she said, oh, I've heard about your church and everything. And I said, well, would you like to come? She said, I want to ask you one question. I said, okay. She said, do you yell when you preach? <laughs> uh, I said, yeah, I do. Oh, it's a stupid question. What a stupid question. Yeah, duh. Do you move when you walk? I mean, what kind of question is that? That's the, <laughs> that's the meaning of preach, you nut. Uh, lift up the voice like a trumpet and show my people the transgression. That's the definition of it. Of course you yell. And she said, I can't stand it. It just, it gets, it just unnerves me. I said, ma'am, you go to ball games? She said, yes. I said, well, don't they yell there? And she said, yeah, but it's different. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah sure, yeah. it sure is. It ain't yelling. It ain't yelling that bothers people. It's what we're yelling. That's what they don't like. Amen. It's what we're yelling. That's what they don't like. I've had, had uh, one guy, uh, they write on my comments. Somebody puts me on YouTube. And I'm all over YouTube, man. I, they want me. They know where to find me. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm something. And I don't even know how to do it. I don't know how to put nothing online. And don't want to know. Don't tell me. I know all, too much about it already. And uh, uh, they, they upload my sermons. They're, they're all over the world. They, some guy put me preaching on that rock music thing, put together a video, and it had like, like almost 400,000 views. And I thought, oh, Lord, I'm sunk, man. I mean, people in Hollywood and, and, and everywhere, and that one rock group put me on their, their album. They made uh, some rock group up, in, up north made an album called Pig Destroyer, uh, the name of the band. Which, what's the pig destroyer in the Bible? What destroyed the pigs? Anyway, that's the name of the group. And they put me preaching on there. 
I was up there preaching and a guy come in and he said, Brother Danny, did you know the rock group put you on there? And I said, he did not. You're crazy. He said, I looked it up. He looked it up and played it for him. Sure enough, I'm on there screaming and hollering. And then they just go right into the like that kind of music. And uh, I don't know how to put anything online. And, uh, and they, they think, you people are crazy. They think we're crazy. And we think they're crazy. We gonna find out who's crazy and who ain't. Amen. Like the preacher said, I might be a nut, but I'm screwed on the right bolt. Thank God. I'm glad, brother. I, I listen, I like what Dr. Rutten used to say. He said, uh, you, you might not like us nuts, but when we're gone, you squirrels are gonna have a rough time with it. Amen, brother. Amen. That's right, brother. That's right. And that old woman, she went to a big church one morning, and I mean, she'd, she'd shout. She'd shout at the drop of a hat, and drop the hat, and get the shout. And, uh, and she shouted every day. If somebody said the name of Jesus, she'd start shouting. Big, fancy church. Her church, uh, something happened, she couldn't go. Big, fancy church. And she sat down right there. There was the big highfalutin reverend up there. All of his uh, staff beside him. All those people sitting there like that. All uh, with their nice suit and ties on. Real dignified. Had their Mercedes sitting out in the parking lot. They were all uh, sitting there all dignified. And the, cho and the choir, they come out and they all had on dresses. Me and every one of them. It looked just alike, same color and everything. I went all the way to the floor. All the, everybody in the choir had on a dress. And they got there and they started singing. And, uh, one, and they said, uh, Jesus. She heard the name Jesus. She jumped up. She went, Woo! And every them people like to die. They like, they like, oh my goodness. Yeah, it embarrassed them. Oh, God, what in the world? Wrong. And, uh, and one of the guys was punching the president. God, get, get her out of here. Get her out of here. And the pastor said, I don't know how long you are. And he told one of the deacons, he said, go down there and get her. Go down there. And he went down there and said, now calm down, ma'am. Calm down. Calm down. And she's going, woo! Thank you, Jesus! Woo! I, and, and I'm telling you, boy, they couldn't get her to calm down, calm down. And finally, he said, well, just, just get her out, get her out. We got bankers, we got lawyers, we got rich people in here. They're going to think we're about to nuts. Get her out. And so they picked her up, and one of them had on, under one arm, one of them had on the other arm. Like that, and they were carrying her feet about that high off the ground. It was dangling, going out the road. And they heard her when she went out. She said, praise the Lord. She said, when Jesus come into Jerusalem, he came in on one donkey. But she didn't say donkey. And I got two. <laughs> I said, Amen. That's exactly what they need. That's exactly what they needed right there. Amen. I'm glad I don't go to morgue for a church, brother. I'm glad the old shout's still alive. I'm glad there's still some old fashioned shouting Baptists that believe the Bible and believe heaven's real and believe the hope of God is exciting and serve God for it. Thank God. I'm thankful I don't have a morgue for a church. Well, Brother Danny, how do you know that's right? Because in Acts chapter 3 and verse 8, when they, that guy got healed, you know what the Bible said he did? He went walking and leaping. And praising God. You think if they knocked on, what if they knocked on your door tomorrow? And they said, uh, Mr. Sozo, you have won the lottery. And uh, you just in, you just won $54 million. And after taxes and everything, you're probably going to get... 10 or 12, uh, 10 or 12 million dollars, and you're going, oh, you know, do you, do you, is anybody in here would say, well, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Son, I wouldn't. I'll go to my door and tell me I'd go and win 12 million dollars. I go, woo! Yes, thank you, Jesus! Exactly the way I do in church. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Same thing. Oh, by the way, if they come near my house and knock on my door, and they said, you've just won $12 million. I wouldn't do like it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Would anybody do that? When, you're, when your kid hits home run, do you go, well, of course not. Nobody acts like that. When <laughs> that shows you what, what that's a bunch of junk. You don't praise God like this. No more you wrote a ball game. You go like that. Like that. Nobody in the Bible praising God fell on their back, people. Just a little, little doctrine thrown in here during the message to get in your head. Then people in the Bible, I, and on TV, I seen a Benny Hinn. He went over and just blew on them, and about 40 people just fell backwards like that. So man, he needs Altoids. <laughs> He must have onion breath. Uh, but I, you don't, they, people in the Bible didn't fall on their back. You know the only group, I guarantee the preacher knows, they but one bunch of people fell on their back when Jesus came up. And that was that bunch of kids who come to crucify him. 
and they fell backwards. Mm. Amen. I'm glad. I'm thankful I don't have a more for church. Finally, finally, I'll say this and I'm through. I don't know. I try not to preach too long. Y'all must need it bad. Uh, look, I say this tonight. I want to say this lastly in closing. I'm thankful that I don't have a modernist for a pastor. Thank God I don't have a modern and never have. By the grace of God, never will. My old pastor at Nebo Baptist Church, Brother Hall Hollifield. It was a Southern Baptist church, but he'd been raised that way, and that was before a lot of the stuff happened in the in the Southern Baptist Convention. There were still at that time a lot of great old men of God. I'm sure he knows them. Percy Ray, all them guys uh, that stood for the Lord did they were still Southern Baptists, but they a lot of them eventually came out and uh, took their stand. But my pastor loved us. He believed in God. He called old Joe Parson down there and they prayed and the power of God came down and I got saved. I got born again. I'm glad I got to hear in person uh, men like Billy Kelly uh, preached all over them mountains up there where we're from and Maze Jackson. I got to meet him in person. I'm glad I got to know old Jack Wood out there in Texas and, and hear them old men of God like that preach. I'm so thankful that I got to know Dr. Ruckman personally and, and heard him preach and listen, no, I'm glad I got exposed to, to the real, not a modernist brother, not some kind of Andy Stanley, some fool, something or another. I like it. And I'm not trying to be ugly, but Lord have mercy, y'all. Charles Stanley have a heart attack if he knew what that boy is doing now. It's unbelievable what people are paying off. I mean, coming up here with a baseball hat on, talking about how awesome you are. You got one right over here in Charlotte, I mean, it, it, that's uh, making fun of the Bible and telling people it's got mistakes in it, and it's just, you're awesome. You're you're awesome, you're awesome, you're awesome. Everybody's awesome and everybody's awesome and everybody's awesome. Oh my goodness, I'm thankful my pastor ain't no modernist. I'm telling you tonight, people, you listen to me. I'm glad that I heard old time men of God get up and thunder the word of God and preach about my sin and preach me to the altar and help me get my heart right with God. I'm glad my pastor wasn't a modernist. You might accuse this man sitting here on the front row of a lot of things. But one of them ain't modernist. Thank God for it. Amen. He, he believed the same thing when I first met him as he does now. You ought to thank God your pastor ain't a modernist. I'm glad, Brother Sam Jones, George Mueller, Charles Finney, uh, Chapman, Billy Sunday, and C.T. Studd, and all those men, uh, Peter Cartwright, and all them old trailblazers come, Brother and they, they stood and thundered the Word of God. I remember the story of George Whitfield, who was a great preacher. And they said, uh, they said George Whitfield, I believe it was him, they said you could, on a clear night, you could hear him a mile away. There were no cars and trains and I mean, no doors. Said you could hear that, 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 that guy holler for a mile. And he preached, he preached till his throat bled. And he preached four or five times a day. John Wesley rode a horse. Uh, I think like 100, 180,000 miles. A horse, people. A horse. And preached four or five times a day until he's 93 years old. And old George Whitfield, he preached and he preached and he preached. He'd go to one town and preach and go to the next town and preach. Wasn't no five-star motel. Wasn't no big giant bunch of love offering and plane tickets and making a celebrity out of it. Somebody got tomatoes thrown at them. Uh, people tried to kill them. Uh, people run out of town, beat and, 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 and threatened their life and everything else. And they, they went like this modern day bunch of preachers that have to be treated. I, I've heard of preachers, Brother Hensley, even in our even independent Baptist, that, that one goes there say, I'm not going there. They don't even give you a nice place to stay. But Lord, you don't need to go nowhere. You don't even need to be no preacher. Yeah. Amen. It ain't going to kill you to sleep. In a, it ain't going to kill you to sleep in your car. You'll live. I've done it. And I'm not above doing it again. I don't have to have a great big fancy. I mean, I appreciate it. People are good to me. I, honestly, I mean, and, I, and you should be if you're able. You should be good to a preacher coming through. But we're not celebrities. We don't have to have the red carpet rolled out from us. Brother, we're just supposed to preach the Bible. And whatever God does, fine. Whatever he don't do, that's fine too. Our generation missed that. I'm glad I didn't come up under a modernistic preacher. I said, old George Whitfield. That, that last few days of his life, 
He went into a town and he was real sick. And he preached that morning, that afternoon. And went out in the upper chamber, like a second floor, floor and had a little prophet's chamber up there. And had a little bed and he could hear the multitude gathering late that evening right before dark. And there's a crowd of people saying, Preach, George! Preach, George! Preach! We had to work all day. We didn't get to hear you. Preach, George! Preach! Preach, George! Preach! That old man of God got up and he's hurting and pain. Went over at that and lit a candle. Put it right there where he sees his Bible. He looked out there at that window and he preached. And he preached and done the best he could. And he preached and he preached and he preached late, late, late that night. He said he laid down. And he put that thing down there and he laid that Bible down. The next morning as he come knocked on his door. Nobody answered. They said, hey, preacher! I was going to do it. Nothing didn't happen. Finally, they come in and found George Whitfield a corpse. And that candle was burned down. And they said he preached till the light burned out. He preached all the way to the light. He preached that helps me tonight. By the help of the Lord, he knows me. He knows the mess I've been through. He knows the burdens I've, been, I've had. Probably, well, he knows some of them. I've been mean, way back before I ever met him, went through a bunch. God only knows. The miles I've went, the problems I've had, God only knows. And I ain't griping. The Lord's been good to me. Way better than I deserve. By the grace of God, people, I want to preach until the light goes out. I do. I don't want to be a quitter. I don't want my girls to come around and see my body in a casket and say, my daddy used to be a preacher. He, it got hard and he gave up. I don't want that. I don't want to say he did like Whitfield. He preached so that light burned out. I'm glad my pastor wasn't a modernist. You know what? Our generation, our generation of Christians, need, we need a good old dose of guts, people, and backbone. I know it's easy to stand up here and preach this because I ain't got no pain in my body. My bills are paid. I got guys in my car. I, it's easy to preach, but it's hard to practice when it comes right down to it. By the grace of God, God being our help, let's make up our mind to go all the way and, see, and finish this race that God's given us to me. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Every head bowed, never eyes closed tonight. Without any music, without any singing, you're going to just gather around. Some of you, maybe you've been saved, but you've not been living right. Come on, done got something coming. Let's get around this altar now. Let's pray. Come on. Come on. Let's just get around this altar now and let's pray. God, give us what we need to stand the test in these day, days of evil and wickedness. Preacher, sing.